This thing was on, wasn't it? I hope so.
In 1885, President Garfield, through his Secretary of War, William Endicott, established a board to review the status of all coastal defense fortifications. The board reported that the improved weapons technology of high-velocity breech-loaded cannons rendered the existing coastal defense systems obsolete. The Endicott Board's recommendations led to a large-scale modernization program for harbor and coastal defenses in the United States. When the war with Spain loomed in 1898, construction of coastal batteries was authorized by Congress under the $50 million Harbor Fortification Defense Act. The historic significance of Fort Fremont is that it is representative of the new coastal defenses built during this period with its upgraded design and new weapons systems. U.S. Naval Station Port Royal in Port Royal Sound is one of the largest deep water uh, harbors on the Atlantic coast. During the Civil War, after contributing to the sack of Beaufort, the Union Army's South Atlantic Blockading Squadron established a base here for the fleet repairs and a coaling station. In 1891 through 1895, a dry dock was built at the Naval Station the only one south of Norfolk, Virginia. It served a strategic support base for the emerging Atlantic fleet. 22 naval ships visited the station, including the battleships USS Maine, Massachusetts, Texas, and Indiana. The USS Maine made its last stop for provisions in Port Royal before leaving for its last voyage to Havana and the start of the Spanish-American War. Fort Fremont was built in 1899 by the Army Corps of Engineers using local labor on condemned private property on St. Helena Island, just across the Beaufort River from the Naval Station. It was designed to play a vital role in the protection of the strategic dry dock and coaling station, which remained critical to the Atlantic fleet during the Spanish and American War. Fort Fremont was one of six fortifications designed to protect the southeastern coast during the Spanish-American War. The fort site eventually consisted of 170 acres with numerous outbuildings, including an administration building, guardhouse, barracks, hospital, stable, mess hall, bakery, commissary, post exchange, laboratory, and a water tower. It was manned by a force of up to 110 personnel, and the main weapon system consisted of battery jessup, which included three of the new 10-inch breech-loaded disappearing cannons, and battery fornets, fornets uh, which had two 4.7 inch rapid fire guns. These five guns and placements built behind bastions of earth, logs, and concrete became some of the highest grounds on the coastal islands. Coastal defenses uh, during the Fort Fremont era was the responsibility of the artillery branch of the United States Army. And in 1901, the fort was manned by the Echo Company, 2nd Artillery, and in 1907, Fort Fremont was turned over to the 16th Company of the newly created uh, Coastal Artillery Corps, which had its own uniforms, insignia, and traditions. In 1910, violence erupted between artillerymen at the fort and the African-American uh, civilians uh, involving the sale of moonshine by the locals. Following several fights, six soldiers were wounded and one killed. Isaiah Potter, arrested for the fatal shooting, claimed that the trouble began with what the Buford Gazette called intimacy between his wife and a private soldier, who was identified later as being Private Frank J. Quigley. A local legend identifies Quigley 
as the ghostly Land's End Light. As early as 1906, the War Department gave serious consideration to the closing of Fort Fremont due to budgetary constraints. In 1908, the general public could actually tour the fort and its weapons emplacements. And in 1911, only a small detachment of soldiers of the 116th Company Coastal Artillery from Fort Screven, Georgia, remained at the uh, post. Following the transfer of the 127th Company to Fort Sam Houston out in Galveston, Texas, the guns at the, at the Fort Fremont stayed and the fort would stay active until World War I. Fort Fremont was officially deactivated in 1912 and the land was put on the market in 1921. Several individuals acquired the property on St. Helena Island over the years with various plants, which by 1946 resulted in the plotting uh, the property into beach lots. In 1951, Mr. and Ms. G.B. Schumeyer renovated the hospital structure into a hunting and fishing lodge. In 1972, the concrete gun emplacements were the property of Mr. and Ms. G.G. Dowling. And in May of 1989, the batteries and the hospital building, still in private residence, were both listed on the National Registry for Historic Places. Over time, the land grew over with maritime forest and the ruins of the fort became an unattractive nuisance. In October 2004, the Trust for Public Land and the Beaufort County Council paid $5.4 million to two landowners in order to transform the remnants of the fort into a beachfront park. Minor improvements uh, such as cleaning up and a sign and some fencing around the property was installed and the Beaufort County Council allocated funds to improve the preserve and the Friends of Fort Fremont installed temporary items such as interpretive signage, stairs, and railings and cleaned up the external graffiti. Uh, final designs for the plans for major park improvements have been approved by the county and the Friends of Fort Fremont. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and hit the bell button so that you'll know when we do an upload each and every Sunday. Remember, every trip starts with a step and that step, well, it starts with you.